Hey there, it's Dr. Karen, and I wanted to pop in and share something that I've been talking a lot about this week, and that is how pediatric SLPs can find more fulfillment at work and help their clients get great results without burning out. So most people don't realize this, but finding a place where you are providing life-changing, high-quality services as an SLP is actually more attainable than most people think. A lot of people think that you've got to be spending hours and hours prepping and planning and doing research in order for your students and clients to be making progress and that you've got to start from scratch and that it's really hard. And yes, our career is challenging, but it is possible to be excited about your job, show up to work confident, and see your clients actually make progress on their goals. And it's possible to do that without all of that overwhelm that a lot of people are feeling right now. And I wanted to share a little bit about that because back when I started practicing as an SLP, I felt like I actually couldn't do best practices because it was just too hard with a schedule and administrative tasks and huge caseload and all those things. And I felt like I really wasn't prepared for the broad scope that we have to cover as SLPs. So I always kind of felt like I just wasn't really good at my job. And as a result, I didn't enjoy it very much. So that's why one of the reasons why I decided to go back and get my doctorate and really just find my place in the field. And during that time when I was in my doctoral program and I went back, got my doctorate in special ed. So not only was I around a lot of people in the field of communication sciences and disorders who were doing really well in their work and seeing good results, but I was also around some other people in the field of education as well who were highly successful and really had found their place and really had a passion for their work and liked what they did, felt like they were making a difference, but also had that balance. And it was kind of crazy because I was like, wow, these people actually look forward to work on Mondays. What's that about? What are they doing and how can I do the same? So I started to study what they were doing and started to look at their habits, their beliefs, their principles. And there were a couple that popped out that were pretty consistent over the over the span of what all of these people were doing and it really came down to three principles that were helping them to get great results and find fulfillment in their work so i wanted to share those with you today so i'll go through three of them and then i'll dive into each one one at a time so principle number one is that they valued systems more than quick fixes principle number two is that they focused on their circle of influence And principle number three is that they really valued their time and energy and worked towards preserving it. So let me dive into principle number one. Principle number one is that they value systems over quick fixes. What I mean by that is that they were willing to figure out broad frameworks and protocols that they could apply to specific situations that they were working with. How that applies to SLPs is that for all those different areas that they were treat, they would they were treating that they would focus on key protocols and developing a set of staple principles and per, uh, protocols for the different areas that they were treating. Instead of trying to do kind of a quick fix, like let's find a pre-made worksheet and some flashcards, they focused on the key principles of and steps that they actually had to do in order to treat that condition and focus on doing that really well. And then they put in the the extra things like worksheets, materials, crafts, whatever. So they did that first and they didn't necessarily rely on the quick fix types of things. Because when you look at materials catalogs, online resources for SLPs. There are so many pre-made scripts and flashcards and apps and all those things. And I'm not saying that those things are always bad. Yes, you know, they're nice to have, but they really don't often get to the root of 
the the actual evidence-based practices that are going to move your clients forward. So people who are really effective focus on just a couple in each area that they treat and focus on doing that really well instead of all these different piecemeal random activities because research has actually shown that the more stuff you have, the more choices you have to choose from, uh, the, the harder it is to make a decision. So that means that when you are, um, when you have to make a choice, if you have too many materials to choose from, it actually is going to be harder to plan versus if you just have one or two choices. And then, yes, you can kind of work on making it more engaging and things like that after that. But they focus on that first, and that allows them to be really efficient because if you have just a couple key protocols that you're really good at that you can do just on the fly like that, it doesn't take you a long time to plan, and you can be really effective, actually more effective, because you're really good at fewer things rather than being scattered. So people who are effective focus on that because, again, more choices and focusing on pre-made stuff is kind of a band-aid. What you want to know is the principles behind effective intervention and really get good at fewer things and minimize the clutter. Um, that is what's going to help drive your clinical practice forward and do it in a way that's not going to result in all of that overwhelm. So that's principle number one, systems over quick fixes. Principle number two is that they, the people who are finding fulfillment in their work and finding more success are focused on their circle of influence. So we all know that there's a lot of administrative red tape that makes it really hard for SLPs to do their jobs well. All kinds of you know, laws, administrative requirements, caseload, limitations, things like that. And yes, um, that does make it hard, but people who are successful focus on the things that they can control, not the things that are unfair or um, wait for changes to come from the top. They know that true changes in the field are actually coming from people who are in the trenches who actually know what's going on. Because a lot of times those people who are making those policies and things like that are pretty far removed from what's going on. And while they might have good intentions, it's not the same as somebody who's living it day in and day out. Somebody like you, who's an SLP who really gets it. So that's why you can actually do a lot more than you think when uh, by actually uh, focusing on what you can control. So people who are successful, they are focused on the micro and the macro when it comes to what they can actually do to improve their skills and make an impact on their clients and the field as a whole. So micro changes would be things like just getting really good at therapy and coming up with really good protocols because what that does is, is impact those people that they're interacting with directly and a lot of times those changes when people come up with ideas in their practice that can be where a lot of those good ideas for research and different curriculums and things like that it originates there with people innovating on the micro level and it just makes an impact on the people that you interact with day to day so they focus on those types of things like boosting their clinical skills again micro changes but then they also can focus on macro changes that they can control. Rather than getting caught up in, oh, I'm just one person, I can't make a difference, they focus on what they can do. And that's where those changes happen. There are so many people in this world who have been not famous, not you know, seeming to have a huge amount of influence, but they were the ones that took the first step. So how this can actually look for SLPs and people in the school systems is that macro changes could include things like um, getting involved in committee work, even getting involved in district, maybe even state level initiatives for policies. Um, how I did this is that um, I was involved in the district level problem solving team and as I did that, I was on this team with all of these different people like psychologists, administrators, and I actually had some impact on changes at the district level as far as our policies. And then 
that led to being involved with some initiatives on the co-op level, more on the local level, broader beyond the district. So having that experience and knowledge can be where you make that impact on the macro level, again, with policies and how you do things beyond just the therapy room and are also just working on collaboration and teaming. So the more that you are involved in things like that, the bigger impact that you have. So again, people who really find that joy in their work and feel like they're making a difference are focusing on those things that they can change because oftentimes um, that can lead to bigger changes. And it takes a lot of us making, doing our part, making those changes. Um, even though you think you're just one person, it takes a lot of us doing those things over and over again. There's this cumulative effect. So that's what can really have that impact rather than waiting for somebody else to do it from the top. Just collectively, you can make those changes. So I think that people who know that they are doing their part, they are the ones that are actually looking forward to work because you're not going to look forward to work if you feel like what you're doing isn't making a difference. But if you're focusing on what you can do and those small micro and macro changes that are going to make that impact, that's where that fulfillment comes and that's where you actually do make an impact. So that's number two, circle of influence. Um, and, and that is why um, in my programs like SLP Learning Academy, I focus on clinical skills. So that will help you with principle number one, systems over quick fixes. and. I also focus on more of those macro level changes like how to collaborate, um, how you can impact others and how you can build your skills to possibly position yourself to be involved in some of those leadership initiatives, whether it be in your current position or whether it be actually taking a leadership position, starting a business or whatever. So we focus on those broader skills in collaboration beyond just clinical skills because as you know, you wear a lot of hats as an SLP. All right, so principle number one, systems over quick fixes. Principle number two, circle of influence. Principle number three, people who are successful value their time and energy and work to preserve it. As you know, there's a lot of different resources out there for SLPs, but that takes a lot of digging that you have to dig through um, to find the good stuff and find stuff that's quality. And there are also a lot of professional development options out there for SLPs that take a lot of your time and energy. And the problem with a lot of those is that research has shown that those one-shot conferences that just deliver a whole bunch of information at once and then just send you back to work without any follow-up actually aren't very effective. There have been studies done that have shown that one-shot trainings that don't offer that follow-up support are not very effective at actually changing practitioner habits and behaviors, meaning that they don't really change what you're doing as far as your practices. Because again, you get back to work and it's actually hard to implement because when you get stuck, there's no place to go for help. And so it's easy to just fall back into your old patterns because you've kind of forgotten everything. Um, and then they also aren't very effective, according to the research, in actually ch improving student outcomes. So not only does it not affect what you're doing, it doesn't actually improve your student's performance, partly because it's not changing what you're doing. So a lot of the models out there don't work and they take a lot of your time and energy. What does work is training that has some follow-up support where you can review the material over and where there is some type of support for implementation, being able to ask questions, having a community to bounce ideas off of, and for accountability. And so we do have some of those resources available for SLPs. There's a lot of online forums and discussion groups, but number one, they don't necessarily have some kind of consistent curriculum, and number two, Again, time and energy, it takes a long time to sift through all of those comments. Sometimes there's drama. It's hard to tell who's a reputable source of information. And it's just very time consuming. And people who are successful value their time and energy. And they don't want to take a lot of time digging through all of that when they don't have to. They want to spend their time doing important things like saving their energy for their clients or maybe having a life outside of work so that they're actually recharged and more effective 
and just, you know, <laughs> more fulfilled because they're not exhausted. So again, people who are successful value more of the curated, funneled down, focused information that so they don't have to dig through all of the different clutter. Again, decision making fatigue can happen when you've got too many options. And it can be easy to get distracted and just, um, you know, not make a decision and go back to doing what you're what you've already been doing, which, um, you know, again, doesn't push you forward. So a successful people invest their time and energy in more expert curated advice so that they know that it, it doesn't take them a lot of time to get the information that they need. That's why, again, and, and programs like SLP Learning Academy, I focus on answering specific member questions so the content is, dry, is driven by member questions and also it's curated, it's efficient, it's not a lot of clutter, there's not a lot of extra bells and whistles in the, in the materials and slides that I provide because I want it to be easy for you to make decisions as far as specific actions to move you forward so you know how to show up to work confident. So that's why, um, again, with these principles, systems over quick fixes, um, circle of influence, and valuing time and energy and investing in things that help you preserve it. That's why I focus on, in SLP Learning Academy, I focus on helping you live by these three principles. How I do that, this is that there are specific aspects of the program that make that easier for you so that you can show up to work confident and really um, set your students up for success and do it in a way that actually allows you to um, have a life outside of work. So the way that I do that is that there are a couple key features. Number one, there's a comprehensive training library that covers a whole bunch of different areas for your clinical practice. So there's things that help you boost your clinical skills like unique case studies and the areas of language, literacy, fluency, pragmatics, AAC. And we're always adding more content as members are, adding, are coming in with their questions. So we've got that that helps you to go get the information that you need and it's an online training portal so it allows you to rewatch trainings as needed and submit questions so that I can create future content that helps guide you forward. So we've got our members training library. There's over 50 hours worth of training in there so you can find exactly what you need. Then we also have our monthly coaching calls for the implementation piece and a Q&A forum so that you can ask questions in between the calls. Again, Without that follow-up support, it's really hard to change your habits and patterns. So that's why I have we go live. We do live much monthly coaching calls where you can prevent, present your case studies and get actionable advice so you can show up to work confident. So again, training library, coaching calls. And then finally, um, in that library, I've recently added some digital slides templates so that, they, that you have some very um, efficient easy to implement protocols that you can use for both online and in-person therapy. And there's no fluff, so you've got some easy materials that you can use in therapy. And you can do it in a way that allows you to plan efficiently so that your sessions are effective in a number of different areas. And you can be effective without hours of planning. Again, because you know them really well, you can plan sessions easily with just a couple tools that are readily available to you um, without having to dig through tons of materials. And, and again, the digital templates, we've got articulation, language and literacy, pragmatics, fluency, and um, again, we're always adding to that. So, um, so that's what we've got. And, and that is how I help you live by these three pr principles that will help you to look forward to work and feel confident in what you're doing, knowing that you are making lasting changes to your students' lives. So if you're tired of feeling unsure of yourself, feeling kind of like a jack of all trades, and you want to feel like an expert and do it in a way that doesn't require you to sacrifice your nights and weekends, I enjoy you to, or I enjoy, I invite you to join us in SLP Learning Academy today. Um, I've got the links in the comments. I'll 
or I've got the links in the description to this video and then I'll add some in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching.